Hello world, this is Penalogy number 34, my name is Earl Gray, and this is a detail of my huge art book collection that I um, shelved here. And here are some more of the little books of mine. Uh, reprints from sketchbooks from Wilhelm Busch von Alfred Marlau Menzel and hmm, that was just a preview of sorts because today I just want to show you a more comic related book, but that's dealing with sketchbooks from comic book artists. And that's this uh, quite gigantic, but that's a general theme in my videos, I guess. Big books. It's quite a big book. Comic sketchbooks by one Stephen Heller, published by Thames and Hudson, I guess, yes. Thames and Hudson. I bought it at an um, exhibition in Hamburg. My son and me, we did a video about that some months ago. And uh, this anthology is really a Bible. And it didn't cost the world. Okay, 25 pounds. I don't think I paid so much, maybe 20 euros for it. Uh, um, still money, but this book is really worth it. It presents the some pages of sketchbooks from many, many artists or as the content page contents pages put it doodles noodles and sketches you can look onto this list and you surely will find some of your favorite comic book artists among them um Robert Crump and Bill Griffiths, Bill Griffith, and others. I want to show you some of them, starting with one crazy guy, Sotos Ananios. He has really a wild style of drawing things. Very sketchy. The way we are doing sketches when we are on the phone or doing something else. Non intentional automatic drawings. But I think I like the I like this weird stuff. And if you don't, please don't switch this video off because the other sketches are very different from this one. But it starts with these crazy dudes drawings. A bit like MS Bastian, which I introduced you before in a panology video. I like it. Um, the The whole book is uh, they are the artists are sorted by in alphabetical order, alphabetical order. So from A to B, as Charles Burns. There are more some classical styled 
drawings. Even they are pretty weird too. And for Charles Burns there are some more. Okay. I find it really soothing that a hero of mine like Charles Burns has to draw some lines a dozen times until he comes with a definite solution like uh, if you look at this woman here or the monster uh, he definitely has to take his time until he has the right boop line <laughs> like here or there and it helps to appreciate the crystal clear style of Charles Burns if you see this help drawings and how he uh, is um, how much work he puts into every line and another doubles page with Charles Burns Yeah, Charles Burns, That's, that must be a topic for future panology. Sure. Oh, here, yeah, this one is nice. By one guy. Who's, what was his name? Oh. Jim Cunio or something. Don't know. But uh, you have this very loose, sketchy, styled page here where he literally runs and races with the pen over the page to uh, define uh, spaces and, and his, uh, the person, the character here. And on the opposite page is the finished, I think, comic, even then quite loose and freely draw, uh, drawn, but, <laughs> and interestingly enough, uh, it deals with the uh, process of creativity. So something completely uh, on another another style, one Manuel Gomez Burns. This graffiti, Keith Herringly hats. Let's see. can find nearly every style and every approach to do comics in this book. For an example, if you look at the work of this guy, one Sir Cyril Guru, he aims to create a 60s mood or 50s mood with his art but the methods he's using for his pictures are very modern. He um, uses vector graphics. He has libraries of different heads that he has altered with um, the computer and he combines different hands, different heads, different bodies, different backgrounds on the computer in a way he refers himself to as a dollhouse technique. As in a dollhouse, dollhouse, he puts all the stuff 
uh, together that he is needed that uh, for the certain mood in the picture. So he uh, does some parodies. I don't know if he really does comics too, but you get the idea what he what he's doing. Maybe this method is. <coughs> has its limitations too, but if I look just on those two pages, or three, four pages, it's quite nice. And here we have Ryan Hughes drawings for computers in different, uh, <laughs> for comics, in uh, different stages of the creation process, drawn, inked, and or colored, a pterodactylus with armpits here, that's new to me, okay, so, oh, did I forgot, ow, oh, that's one I need to show you too, it's roughy, no. Here we have some drawings of Russ Brown. Some crazy angry birds. Oh. Angry crazy birds. If you know these guys from High Fructose, these anthologies, uh, with these strange kitties with gigantic skull heads and gross stuff like this, the drawings from Nathan Jarevicius are uh, really up that alley too, and it's stated in the book that he's doing some comics. That must be a weird experience to read a comic by this guy. Never heard of him. And I don't know if I really dare to read such crazy story, but must be interesting. Yeah, that's the uh, combina combination of um, terrifying and, and cute that this high fructose artists uh, that appear there um, are cultivating. Double page spread by one unknown artist. Should I? I look up how he's. Matthias Lehmann. Oh, that seems to be a German name. But never heard of him. Two. So that's one guy we all heard about him. David Matsukelli. Just one double page with insects. Seem to that seem to have got his interest, and here's here's some uh, early drawings for Asterios Polyp on a very uh, on a page full of doodles. Where he developed this character. Asterios Polyp is. Uh, is a crazy drawing. If you draw this head for yourself, you see how how, 
how simply it is constructed, but it's genuine in the same way. So, um, Peter Desef is more well known for his uh, the characters in the movie Ice Age, well, movies uh, Ice Age. And he's a gorgeous draughtsman artist as well, if you look at these images. So one hell of an artist too is Jim Sterenko, as you see here. That's pencil drawing and another pencil drawing, but with the feel, with the very feel of a completely finished drawing and a what's that, a bed plane? Never saw that before. <laughs> um, yeah, you. That's the fi one fine thing with this thick book. You can flip through the pages and always see something new. Fine stuff indeed, I think. So, let's finish off, off with uh, Europe classic Joost Swarte. And uh, you see his drawings and the finished panels where the drawings were used. And he used uh, some uh, transparency, transparent paper for the drawings and to copy those onto uh, the panel something like this and yeah, I think it's very comforting to see that these artists have to fight to, to find the right line and uh, until they create such crazy, in a way, perfect pictures. They Linear clear wouldn't be linear clear if um, there wasn't a process of clarification before, where all the lines, the hatchings and so are gone that weren't actually used or useful for or uh, needed for uh, telling a story. So, and um, yeah, you can take out your pencils and try to draw after the great masters of comic book art. Yeah, on the back they are all listed again. And I think that's for this time, folks. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.